morning, Edward. Thank you for taking your time off to uh, do this with us. Um, maybe if you can introduce yourself. Uh, uh, Good morning, I'm Edward. I'm the shelter manager for Paws. And uh, how long have you been with Paws? Uh, I've been with Paws for the last five years. Okay. Uh, Alright. Uh, how long has Paws been established? Uh, I believe it's about 24 years. 24 years. Okay. Mm. That's a very long time. Oh, yes. So, um, for the entire duration of 24 years, POS has been located in Subang? Yes, the very same location. Mm. Uh, does POS work, POS work with any other animal organization in Malaysia? Uh, yes, I... In the past, uh, I wouldn't know, but uh, for me now, and uh, the current committee, we extend our help to some of those independent or individual and uh, rescue people. Okay. Um, how many animals uh, are you able to accept, say, roughly per week or per month? Okay. Uh, currently, we are receiving dogs, cats, um, stray dogs, stray cats mm -hmm. from three local councils. Mm -hmm. That is uh, Subang Jaya, Shah Alam, and PPJ. Right, we have about we use, including the public surrenders, mm -hmm. we take in something like four to six hundred animals uh, every month. Okay. Uh, once the animals are healthy, what happened to them? Can someone adopt them? Uh, yes, all the animal in the shelter is open for adoption. Uh, once this animal is vaccinated and neutered, mm -hmm. uh, they are open for all the people. Okay. Uh, do you have many interests or calls for adoptions? Oh yes, every day we have, uh, every day, every single day we will have calls uh, from the general public mm -hmm. asking whether we have kittens, puppies, sometimes they even ask for more exotic animals. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, how do calls let the public know about what uh, pets are available? Uh, about three months back, we actually uh, open up uh, another department over here, uh, we call it a marketing department. Mm -hmm. It's run by uh, the person. Uh, they are supposed to come up with events, publicity, uh, fundraising. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Do you have a memorable experience with any animal that's in the shelter? Uh, memorable, good and bad. Or just good. Um, it's up to you. Share <laughs> okay, what you want uh, to share with the public. Well, uh, we have um, good and bad as well. Mm -hmm. I had a uh, Rottweiler, I think about three years ago, mm -hmm. that was abandoned right in front of our shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, he has got a wire mm -hmm. uh, that has uh, grown into the throat of the animal. Oh dear, he was tied. He was tied with a wire, I think it was a puppy. And when the dog grew up, the owner, I think, they did not change that piece of wire and the wire has actually grown into the throat. Oh and it has got a very, very bad cut from left to right. Oh right? And the, that wound mm -hmm. was actually bleeding quite badly and uh, they were full of maggots. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that guy just dropped the dog and just drove off. And fortunately, uh, we saw the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, the dog wasn't even tired or you know, just drop and go. Oh dear. Yeah. And uh, fortunately, the dog was uh, very mild temperament. Yeah. It's got a very mild temperament, and we brought it in, mm -hmm. and uh, we removed the wire. Did a surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and the dog survived the okay. body mm -hmm. and we successfully rehomed it to Pahan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think about a year later, the person who adopted the dog uh, brought the dog back to the shelter uh, for us to view. Wow. And I think it's indeed a very good ending. That's good. That's good. Right? That's very good. And 
I also have another weird incident here right. where this particular owner mm -hmm. that came into the shelter wanted to surrender two dogs mm -hmm. and uh, because it was a weekend we were quite busy attending to other visitors and uh, and this guy just uh, buy the dog uh, at one of the pole here and uh, came in to us and we told him just give us a few minutes while we attend to the other customer and he left the two dogs, he took a round walk inside the shelter and then slowly he just walked out and put the two dogs behind us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we have this type of uh, case as well and uh, you wouldn't believe people would throw dogs across our gate as well. As in fly? Yes, yes. They okay. swing they swing the dog. They swing the dog across our... How big are these dogs? A sisu. A sisu. A sisu dog was swing across our gate. <laughs> and that poor dog just land on his back. Oh, you. Flat on the ground. And that guy just jump, jump into the car and just throw away. Goodness. Uh, those are very memorable uh, incidents. In this Malaysia we are talking about. Oh yes, yes, yes. we are talking about Malaysia. <laughs> I've, I've gone around the shelter, it's actually uh, quite sizable. Um, um, how, how many paid staff do you have over here? Uh, I have uh, two office staff, okay. me included. Okay. I have uh, three vets, uh, um, they are semi-volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, they have their own clinics. Mm -hmm. They came. They come to the shelter to help mm -hmm. uh, on a small allowance, mm -hmm. and they are on rotary, rotary, rotation shift. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> and then I have a driver. Mm -hmm. uh, he will go around picking up uh, unwanted uh, dogs, meaning people who surrender dogs mm -hmm. uh, to the shelter. Some people mm -hmm. can not have the transport. We will go and pick it up, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, we have six cannon boys to feed, clean, uh, general wash, upkeep and whatever. Okay. Mm. Do, do you have any volunteers to help you run course? Because it doesn't seem like there's enough. Uh, okay, uh, we, 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 we yeah. have some 3,000 registered volunteers with us. Right. Right, but uh, sad and unfortunate. Okay. Most of these uh, volunteers are actually students who come in to do their school assignment. Not right. on a real volunteer yes, basis. Yes, no. yes, yes. They are okay. most of them are actually here to do their project right. or their re the requirement by whatever syllabus they are in. Okay. Which is fine with me. Which right. is fine. Which is fine because, like I said earlier, I will take one hour of the time mm -hmm. to teach them something, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully, even if it's two percent of them pick up. I think I'm fine, right? Yeah. And um, we have uh, a bunch of uh, very reliable uh, volunteers mm -hmm. who help us out, help us out uh, in our event. Mm -hmm. You see, our number of staff here actually is rather small. Yeah. So when we have events going out to do animal adoption mm -hmm. program or fundraising program mm -hmm. or awareness program. Mm -hmm. Uh, the both uh, is solely run by volunteers. Right. Okay. That's that's very good. So if someone wants to be a volunteer, how how do they go about doing it? Uh, nothing very difficult. They just have to come in and sign up the volunteer form. Right. And uh, that's it. Okay. Mm. Uh, how much? This is quite sensitive, but um, I'll ask it anyway. How much does it cost to run course each okay. one? Uh, currently, uh, we require something like forty to forty-five thousand a month to upkeep this place, mm. from feeding to medication to mm. upkeep of the whole, whole place, uh, including renovation, repair, mm. and all that. Okay. Mm. Uh, do you get grants or support from the government? No, the government unfortunately has never given us one single rate sum. Right. Okay. And, uh, with the Barisan government mm -hmm. and now with the PKR government, same, no support. Okay. 